Mr. President, South Africans are less safe today than they were when you came to office, and that's a fact. How can we possibly feel safe when we are governed by a criminal syndicate that steals from the poor to give to the politically connected? A government run by a political party in which political killings have become standard operating procedure to climb the patronage ladder. What example are criminals in South Africa to follow if not the example of their own government? At every Sona, your broken promises on fighting crime echo across the country and into the homes and the broken hearts of families across the country, living in fear every day that they will be the next victim. When you became president, you promised to halve violent crime within 10 years, but murder has increased by nearly 20% since you took office, while all contacts in the last year. Last year, in your reply to the SONA debate, you acknowledged my contribution when I called for more effective use of technology. But one year later, not even the telephone lines are working. There are no drones in the sky and no body cams on police officers. Recent mass killings in the Eastern Cape further expose your broken promises, Mr. President. Two mass killings in rural Beachy outside Mtata in as many months. In Kwasakele in Nelson Mandela Bay, there have been two mass killings in just two weeks, leaving 12 people dead and others injured, leaving a community shocked and shaken. This is not the kind of shock that you often exclaim, Mr. President. This is real and painful shock of the brutal and unrelenting slaughter of family members and neighbors in our communities. In the northern areas of Nelson Mandela Bay, gang violence has taken the lives of more than 20 people since the beginning of the year, while the Chatty police station in that area remains understaffed and under-resourced. In fact, police officers at this station lock themselves inside at night during load shedding because their generator doesn't work and they fear being attacked like the five police officers who were killed in the Ngobo police massacre. Across KwaZulu-Natal, the fear in the aftermath of the violent unrest of 2021 still lingers, yet of the 10 police stations I visited in that province in one week last year, only one had a generator that worked, while others complained that they hadn't worked for years or that they couldn't get diesel due to centralized procurement issues. The evidence is clear, Mr. President. Your minister is failing to deliver results, but you are desperately clinging to him while our nation descends into criminal chaos. So bad is your minister that he stood here yesterday and told this House that 4,909 people were arrested last year for GBV-related crimes as though it was some sort of a victory. What he didn't tell you, Mr. President, is that 57,102 women were victims of violent crime last year, which means that your minister's victory represents arrests of just 8% of the total number of GBV-related crimes. In your SONA last week, you said government will partner with the private sector to support the proper functioning of the 10111 centres, and while this is welcomed, if it is to be believed, it only made its way into your speech because in January this year, the DA exposed the complete dysfunction of the 10111 centres across the country. That's a fact. Dysfunction. Dysfunction which has left millions of victims and witnesses of crimes helpless on the end of seven million dropped phone calls over three years because they have less than half the staff required to man the phones. These dropped calls are crime statistics, Mr. President. There are victims on the ends of these calls. In one message I received recently, a grandparent wrote in Mission Vale, we need help. My grandson has been shot more than five hours ago. His body is still in the house. They shot him. Do you know who to contact? The police don't respond. So here is a challenge for you, Mr. President. If you can turn this situation around and have 75% at least of the required staff employed with less than 10,000 dropped calls and uninterrupted power supply to every 10111 center by your next sonar, I will literally eat the words off these pages. You see, without an actual plan, without an actual plan, without a deadline and the results which follow, your words will remain meaningless while lives will continue to be lost. Over the years, you've successfully created the illusion that you are bolstering the ranks of the police with more members when the truth is that there has been a net loss of 20,000 police officers over the last 10 years. 
You need only read the SAP's annual reports, which reveal that there, are, there were 199,000 personnel at the end of 2012, 182,000 at the end of 2021, and 178,000 by the end of this financial year, including your new recruits. And while we have many, many excellent police officers who go above and beyond the call of duty under the most difficult circumstances, they are being outnumbered by the unfit, poorly trained and corrupt cadres. What SAPS need is to, needs is to promote merit within its ranks, not cadres, and ensure that all appointments are beyond reproach if we have any hope in reversing the decline. South Africans want results, Mr. President, not more broken promises. And this is what they will vote for in 2024, a party that delivers results. In Parliament last year, you committed to investigating the Western Cape government's LEAP community safety model after acknowledging its success. Well, now is the time for you to act in order to keep your promise to keep our communities safe by throwing your full support and the fiscus at a tried and tested policing model with proven results. When LEAP was launched in Philippi East in 2022, that station has now completely fallen off the list of top 30 contact crime stations in South Africa. Over a 12-month period, Guguletu noted a 30.6% decrease in murder. Delft has seen a 17.4% decrease in murder with contact crime also coming down. These, these are the results, Mr. President. These are the actual results that should follow from a promise. This is the kind of leadership that we deserve to build a safer South Africa for all of us. This is how you get things done, Mr. President. You make a promise and then you keep it. We don't need more hollow words and broken promises from an empty suit at your next sonar. We need results. And you can start by firing your minister. I thank you.